Hello friends, let us now learn about the facial injuries and abnormalities in this chapter. In the first topic, we will learn about cleft lip and cleft palate. Cleft lip is the most common congenital abnormality of orofacial structures. This is usually, this cleft lip is usually isolated cleft lip can be seen. But most commonly, it is isolated. It is associated with congenital heart disease. First, we will see unilateral cleft lip. Unilateral cleft lip occurs due to the non-fusion of maxillary process and posterior displacement of alar cartilage. So, if you see, this is a picture. Um, this is the nose. Okay, this is the cleft lip which is joining here. The maxillary processes which should be fused are not fused properly, and there is the here the alar cartilage is displaced posteriorly this is bilateral cleft lip normally cleft lip with cleft palate is seen in 1 in 600 live births whereas isolated cleft lip is seen in 1 in 1000 live births cleft lip and cleft palate are more common in males and cleft palate alone is more common in females Cleft lip alone is seen in 15% of individuals. Cleft lip with cleft palate is seen in 45% and it is most common. Combined cleft lip and combined cleft palate is most common. Then cleft palate alone is seen in 40% of individuals. Etiology includes genetic predisposition. If you see the environmental factors like maternal epilepsy, drugs like steroids, diazepam, Phenytoin are associated with cleft lip and cleft palate. It is also associated with certain syndromes like Pierre Robin syndrome, Stickler syndrome, Eppert syndrome, Spitzen syndrome, Uppert syndrome, Down syndrome, or Teacher Colin syndrome. In all these syndromes, this cleft lip or cleft palate is associated. The clinical features here are there is difficulty in breathing and feeding. So, the isolated cleft lip is diagnosed at 18 weeks of gestation. By 18 weeks of gestation, we can diagnose the isolated cleft palate. Now, one important thing here is the treatment. In the treatment, surgery is the treatment of choice and the principles of surgery include first cleft lip and cleft palate. Cleft lip surgery attaches and re attaches the muscles around the oral cavity we will have to reattach all the muscles around the oral cavity in cleft palate it produces an anatomical closure of the dis dis defect and also it has to create an apparatus so that proper speech development can be favored and we will have to minimize the min maxillary growth difference and dento alveolar deformities so if you see the secondary management is Secondary management includes regular review of multidisciplinary team here followed by hearing, speech, dental development and facial growth should always be reviewed by multidisciplinary team. Surgeries are Millard rotation advancement technique, Hila Musirier's technique, Tennyson Randall's technique and Thompson's technique. Timing of operation is very important for this disease. If, it is, if there is unilateral cleft lip, then you should do single operation at 5 to 6 months is done. If it is bilateral cleft lip, single operation is done at 4 to 5 months. Then if there is soft palate only, then we do single operation is done at 6 months. If there is hard palate only, then single operation is done at 15 to 18 months. If there is both cleft uh, lip, soft palate and hard palate deformity, then you can do two operations. One operation for soft palate is done at 6 months and the second operation for hard palate is done at 15 to 18 months. If there is unilateral cleft lip with cleft palate, then two operations are done. One for cleft lip and soft palate, we do it at 5 to 6 months and the other at ha for hard palate, we do the surgery at 15 to 18 months. If there is bilateral cleft lip and cleft palate, then one surgery for cleft lip and soft palate is done at 4 to 5 months and for hard palate it is done at 15 to 18 months of age. So we have one important system which is Lahashal system which is L for lip, A for alveolus, hard palate and soft palate. Here hard palate and soft palate will only one 
B1. This is right alveolus, right lip, left alveolus, left lip. Whenever there is no cleft, that means if it is normal, then you put a dot. If there is complete cleft lip, you will have to put a capital letter. If it is incomplete cleft lip, you will have to put a small letter. I will put give you an example. If there is left complete cleft lip, in that left complete cleft lip, right lip is normal. So one dot alveolus is normal. Second dot hard palate is normal. Next again dot. Soft palate is normal. Again, dot. Alveolus is normal. So dot again. At the last L, it is complete. So capital letter L should be put. This is how you will represent the left complete cleft lip with lachial system. Then, if we see similarly, right incomplete cleft lip with alveolus. Then here the cleft lip right side it is incomplete. So you will put small L. Then alveolus is also incomplete. You will put small a, small l, small a. Whereas hard palate, soft palate, left alveolus, left lip are normal. So you will put dots for them. So this is how you will uh, do lachial system. So this is about cleft lip and cleft palate. Thank you for watching.